Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Meg Bob's Barn. Today, I'm going to be talking about the, all of the mistakes that I made building my barn, uh, and I hope that by sharing it with you, you will not make the same mistakes when you build your barn. Number one, and the biggest one, and the reason for every gray hair on my head, is that I failed to include a period of performance end date in the contract. So the builder told me it would take about two months, eight weeks, for the build to be complete. And while I was skeptical, I was like, well, I'm not a builder. I'm not an expert, you know. Two months should be fine. We, we, I signed the contract on May 9th, and the build was supposed to start in June. So I scrambled around, made sure the barn pad was ready, the demo had been done, everything had been hauled off. Because, ladies and gentlemen, when you hire a builder that is just a builder, you have to be your own general contractor. So I'm a really type A person, and I said, okay, build is going to begin, you know, in June. It'll be, you know, June, July, maybe trip into August a little bit um, before I'll have a barn. And, you know, weather permitting, I, I chose that time of year, even though it's hot here in Maryland. I figured that the weather would be favorable and, you know, wouldn't get rained on and the horses would have shelter, you know, eventually. The... Problem became is that I did not, even though there was a space for it in the contract, the builder was like, Oh, you don't need to fill anything in there. It'll be done in eight weeks. Don't worry. So I did, we like, they, we, we, we kind of left the end date silent in the contract. And I knew with having some experience with contractors that maybe, you know, the schedule would slip a couple of weeks, you know, or I'd, I'd have a delay in getting the electrician, which would then delay the builders from finishing up or there'd be a delay with the county with the permits and so I understood that there would be some flexibility in there that I would need to you know mentally emotionally and spiritually account for however these jokers left in the middle of the build on like pressing Amish business and just did not come back until I threatened uh, legal action with the attorney with the attorney that I had so please for your sake learn from my mistakes put in a period performance end date in the contract and also write a clause in there that has disincentives financial disincentives for the builder so for every week that that build is late and it's their fault okay it's a thousand dollars off the price tag $500 off the price tag, $100 off the price tag, any amount that makes you a priority over other people. Because what I figured out, I think that they were doing was that they were floating jobs. So they would do mine and then they would go do somebody else's and do somebody else's and do somebody else's. And because my barn was only a four stall barn, I wasn't a priority. Meanwhile, my draft horses were out in the pastures sweltering heat with like only a run in shed, barely. And the pastures were like torched and everything, nothing was going to plan. I had to then play like a juggling act with all of the tradesmen that had lined me up on their schedule and I had to keep pushing them and pushing them and pushing them and pushing them back, which made me look like a complete asshole. And it was because these guys just left the job. So uh, ultimately the horses were not in the barn until December. And I didn't even have a way to close the stall doors. So the first night that they were in there, we were having a huge storm. And I had to tie them shut with lead ropes because like the, 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 the hardware wasn't installed. So this two-month project quickly turned into a six-month project. And, you know, I single-handedly pissed off and threw up the schedules of the plumber, the electrician, the excavator, you know, all of that. And um, it was just all because these guys just left me. And they'll leave you too. Trust me. That's, I think that's just part of their game. So if you can, you may want to get a contractor that is like an all-in-one contractor. So he's a general contractor and he'll actually manage the project for you. And they'll have control over their tradesmen. Like they'll have control of their own concrete cement pouring people. They'll have their own electricians, their own plumbers, their own carpentrymen, their own, you know, they'll have connections with the suppliers for the wood and everything. So you don't have to do anything except stroke a check. That would have been, looking back, a better idea. Okay, number two mistake 
that I made with my barn is the barn doors themselves to the stalls, excuse me, the barn, the stalls themselves. I asked this Amish guy who I suspected had a wealth of knowledge and understanding of the draft horse mentality. And I said, you need to make these stalls elephant proof. You need to make it like, like if I put a horse in here, it's never getting out again. And he looked at me, he smiled, he said, oh yeah, absolutely. And then just went ahead and put standard, average grade shit in there, wood, whatever, the finishes, the latches, the bars, everything. And within one year, not even a year, the horses had moved the entire um, wall of stalls, like into the aisleway. It had bowed out, they had popped like the nails and the screws, and they had the whole thing was bowing into the aisleway. So my dad and I had to sit there and we had to through bolt it back into the pillars and we had to like use washers and countersink things. And I don't know, I don't know what it was. My dad's the handy one, but it was, it was disappointing to spend that much money and to explicitly say, these are for draft horses. They need to be draft horse proof stalls. And within eight months, you know, not only had they ripped the doors off the hinges multiple times, the sliders, you know, the, um, off the, not the hinges, but you know what I'm talking about, the sliding uh, tracks, they had moved the entire front of the, of the stalls, like all of them that they were in, just by, just by leaning on them, kicking them, just being horses. So you need to look into whoever your builder's eyes are if you have draft horses and like let them see the whites of your eyes, let them see the fire in your soul. Okay, and maybe you need to do a concrete block barn. Maybe just wood isn't going to cut it. But I don't. But all I know for sure, within five years, I'm going to be replacing those stalls. So I pre, I I didn't go with the cool gold brass finial ones. I didn't go with like you know the nice fancy. I mean because I figured in my head, even triple reinforced, those stalls the way they are are probably going to be disposable. Considered, and I'll be replacing them in five years. So. Keep that in mind if you've got draft horses or maybe you've got a cribber or a chewer or one that gets cast easily. You know, make, set them up for success if you can. You know, build a stall, build their environment, you know, to try and suit their individual needs. So, all right, yeah, so number two was not effectively enforcing what my requests were when regards to material durability and construction to meet the draft horse demands. <sighs> Serenity now. Serenity now. It was kind of a mistake, but it kind of wasn't. It was like a known mistake. It was with the design that I did. My intention with the area that has the garage door, you can see it in my other video when I did a barn tour, was to ultimately park our John Deere tractor in there. And so it would be like on a concrete slab, out of the elements, it would last forever. Because right now it's like camped out in the front yard in like one of those like temporary tent things that's like, it's like being held together with duct tape and ratchet straps. So I was like, nope, I'm gonna have a dedicated space for the tractor because my husband has taken over the garage with his race car stuff where the tractor used to be but I was like I'm gonna solve that problem because I'm gonna have a tractor bay in my barn well I learned that the track the barn area uh, the way it works is the two feet too short to fit the actual tractor in it and I kind of figured this out uh, in the building process because what I failed to fully comprehend is that walls themselves take up space. And so if the walls are eight inches thick at the front and wall eight inches thick at the back, you've lost 16 inches of space. Also, um, what you do to one side of the aisle, you have to do to the other side of the aisle. So if I did... If I, if I extended, I wanted to do the bay, the um, tractor bay two feet deeper, you know, two feet longer, have a bigger space, it would either eat up the wash stall area, make it a 10 by 12, which you're like, oh, what's the big deal? It's not a big deal. But it would throw off the symmetry of the sliding doors. And so when you open the side sliding doors, 
into the barn, it would cover the entrance to the tack room. So I was like, well, that's not really going to work for me. And what's more is on the other side of the aisle, the stalls, which were 12 by 12, true 12 by 12, as close as we could get them, would be thrown off. And I'd have to get custom grill work, custom, you know, doors and everything to make up the difference. And I was like, you know what? Never mind. The tractor is just going to live in the yard in perpetuity. And we're just going to have to deal with it. So we're, we decided to park the riding lawnmowers in there and the carriage and a bunch of miscellaneous stuff we didn't have space for in there instead. So it was like a mistake, but it was kind of like I made a executive decision um, rather than throw off the design of the rest of the barn and uh, interfere with the entrance to the tack room um, from the outside. I was just going to have to bite the bullet and leave the tractor in the yard. So, mm -mm. Uh, all in all, there's not too many things I would do differently if I had a chance to do it again. Um, I did a lot of research before I did it, and I learned from a lot of mistakes other people made with their barns, and I tried to mitigate as many of those as I possibly could. So other than the schedule being horrendous, the, uh, <laughs> the barn door, the actual stall doors being, like, pathetic, and the barn being two feet too short to actually fit the tractor that I had designed for it to do, I overall don't have too many complaints with it, really. So, anyways, uh, that's all. Those are my big three mistakes. Hopefully you've learned from them and you can incorporate uh, this information into your building project so you can avoid them. Thanks. Bye.